Today's budget PC is meant to demonstrate just how useful older hardware dating back to the year 2011 can be in 2024. Installed into this Dell XPS tower, there is a low-profile Zotac GeForce GTX 1050 Ti graphics card with 4GB of GDDR5 memory. Beneath this fairly stock CPU cooler is an Intel Core i7-2600 CPU with 4 cores and 8 threads. Beside that is 16GB of DDR3 1600MHz RAM. There's Windows 10 installed onto this solid state drive, which is a Patriot P210 512GB 2.5 inch solid state drive. Powering everything is this light on 300 watt power supply. What's nice about this motherboard is that it doesn't have proprietary features that are characteristic of many other Dell pre-builds. Shown here is a 24 pin power supply connector, so you can upgrade the power supply to something beefier if you want to run a higher end graphics card. There's also a couple of PCIe lanes down here that you can install network cards or expansion cards for USB. And there's actually a slot for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, although this card is a little bit slower as compared to more modern examples, but if anything, the Bluetooth does actually work pretty well. Now for cooling, we're limited to this one side panel grill for passive air intake, and there's one air exhaust fan here. Although it would be nice to have an option for an air intake fan, for this low profile card, I'm not really too worried about thermals getting out of hand. For front I.O. in the case, we have 2 times USB 2.0 microphone and headphone input, a great expansion bay with multiple card readers including SD cards, and the inclusion of a CD slash DVD RW optical drive. And hidden behind this panel is two extra USB 2.0 and an extra bay for expansion if you have something to install there. The rear I.O. of the motherboard features an SPDIF port, an HDMI port where you could connect another monitor, a SATA port, 4x USB 2.0, an extra VGA port for another monitor, RJ45 Ethernet port, audio in and out, and the 1050 Ti features one HDMI 2.0, display port 1.4a, and a DVI port. Unfortunately, there's no USB 3.0 native to this motherboard, but as I mentioned before, there are PCIe lanes that could be utilized for expansion cards and you could install one right underneath the graphics card. Although this hardware is a little bit on the older side, I still consider it to be very versatile in 2024. I really feel like this would work well for video editing, photo editing, gaming, multi-monitor setups, and a variety of other different things that people use computers for. If you don't need that optical drive, you can unplug it and you have access to three more SATA ports, which means that you can connect a lot of hard drives and set this up as network attached storage or a media server. I really like testing out older hardware like this and comparing the performance to something like a standard pre-built PC off the shelf at some big box retailer. Now the next portion of the video is just going to show off gaming performance in 2024, so hopefully that gives you some insight. If you're using a similar setup in 2024, let me know how it's working out for you in the comments below. I'd love to know what you're using it for. I think I've said enough for this short video, let's check out the gaming and benchmark performance.